so might have noticed in my previous videos I was being a little bit fluffy around the health and safety of electro etching and like I said in those videos one of the reasons for that is because there's so much contradictory information out there I've never come across a technique where it just seems like nobody agrees um, every article and book that I've read has given different information it just is bonkers <laughs> literally can't get my head around it as you saw in one of the videos where I caught a clip of myself doing this maybe pulling my hair out trying to get my brain to understand everything um, but I just wanted to talk to you about that a little bit so one of the things is the health and safety ranges from having to wear a respirator um, and full personal protection equipment through to pretty much no health and safety and saying it's a really safe technique so I just want to run you through some of the whys. I don't know about you, but I find with, well, with life really, but in silversmithing, an awful lot of the time we're told how you have to do something, but we're not often told why it has to be done. So it's very easy to take things at face value, but if you don't really understand the why behind something, you don't know why you're doing it, you don't exactly know how it's working, and therefore, um, it means that you, it's harder to problem solve when things go wrong, if you don't quite understand it. But also it means that in certain, in certain situations, you might be going, you know, putting in health and safety measures that you just don't need to, but those health and safety measures are sort of becoming cumbersome and getting in the way of what you're trying to do. And then equally, there might be a lot of um, times where you're just not putting in any health and safety measures when you really need to. So I think it's really important to understand the why a little bit, which is what I've been trying to look into. And I'm just going to share with you a little bit about what I found out. So you'll read one article and it will talk about needing to wear a respirator and not breathing in any of the sulfates or the salts that you're going to use for the electro etching. So that was one of the first things that struck me and it was like, well, we're, t we're using table salt. So we're using um, sodium chloride. The only real difference between sodium chloride and table salt is the fact that table salt has a little bit, <laughs> has a little bit of additives added to it. So anti-caking agents and things like that. And they are the things that um, might get in the way of the etching working properly. So we're looking for um, kosher salt or some sort of pure salt rather than standard table salt but other than that sodium chloride so it's the sort of thing you come into contact with most day well every day <laughs> and you, you know eat it you regularly handle it in a household environment so i couldn't get my head around why you would need to wear a respirator when working with it similarly um some articles and websites you read talk about wearing rubber gloves when handling it when it's not only dry but also when you've mixed it with the water to create your electrolyte solution and again I couldn't quite get my head around that because I know we're using sort of you know fairly large quantities of salt to water but people go swimming in the Dead Sea and they you know they, they try stuff like this for health reasons so I couldn't understand why you would be so imperative to wear the gloves so Obviously, it's a good idea to, you know, use basic protection, things like gloves and goggles. Um, but still, I, I just wanted to understand why, because if you're just working with salt, a lot of people I know would then skip it and think, well, you know, I don't need to wear it. But if there was an actual proper reason, then I wanted to know what it was so that you knew how important it was to actually persevere and make sure you had that protection in place. One of the things I did, there's a group on Facebook which solely um, is for people who electro etch and it's a really prolific group so I posed the question on there and it's like why is there such a diverse range of health and safety considerations depending on where you're reading especially when you're just using things like table salt. And one of the guys who set the group up, so somebody that's very very experienced, came back and said liability. And that just sort of hit it on the head for me and I said yeah that's exactly what I, I presumed it was because if you're using the table salt and you're using the correct mixture in terms of the, um, the, the electrolyte that you mix up for the right metal and anode and cathode that you're using which is what we discussed about in previous videos then it should be a safe process but the problem is if you deviate from that and use different electrolytes or different mixes of metals or higher amps that's when there may be a problem so again to me that comes down to really understanding exactly what you're working with what setup you choose to work with and what that then means on a you know chemical reaction 
basis and a safety basis so that you can choose what health and safety to put in because one of the other comments that came back on that group was it's just good working practice and it's like that may be the case but you could say that about absolutely everything um i, th I think I think we all need to take personal responsibility for our safety and that depends on what you're comfortable with. So for example, with household cleaning products, some of those are you know, quite toxic and some people wouldn't think anything of using them with their hands without you know, any breathing apparatus on, squirting them all over the kitchen and the bathroom, whereas other people are becoming more and more aware and they're only using eco products or they always wear gloves. So it's up to each individual what you're happy with and knowing what you're working with. One of the other things I was questioning was the gloves, as we said, because some um, sites were talking about you must wear thick electrician's gloves, um, so thick leather or rubber gloves, and other sites were saying, no, you just need to use, you know, latex or similar vinyl gloves to protect your hands. So in theory, if it's just waterproof vinyl latex gloves, then that's just about not getting the solution onto your hands. When they were talking about the thicker rubber gloves, that's because of the, the possibility of electric shock. So again, I was questioning that because in theory, the amps that we're working with shouldn't be a possibility of an electric shock. Um, but obviously there's always a risk. And again, the response back was actually no, the gloves are because if you're working with certain um, sulfates, like copper, silver nitrate and copper nitrate, they can stain your skin um, and you end up with either brown or bright blue fingers, which you don't want. The other thing to complicate matters is I've been working with sodium chloride, but you also get sodium sulfate. So a lot of the time when I'm reading the health and safety um, advice, it's talking about working with sulfates and sodium sulfate, I know, can be an irritant to skin and eyes and digestive tracts. And um, there are a lot more health and safety um, considerations around that. Um, so again, I think it's very much down to individuals doing research around what they are happy to work with because each type of electrolyte so each mixture whether you're working with the, the copper nitrate or the silver nitrate or sodium chloride or sodium sulfate they all have their pros and cons but they're all going to have completely different health and safety considerations and they all react completely differently depending on um, what metals you're then using them with to etch and what your anode and your cathode is so you really need to look into your own setup and know how to work with that Another one of the big ones is um, when they're talking about salts based etching being really safe and then other people saying no it's going to explode, that's to do with the ampage. So when you are electro etching with um, sodium chloride it gives off hydrogen if you're working at a higher amp. If you're not working at that higher amp then it should not be giving off hydrogen. So again, in theory, if you work within the lines of the advice, so, you know, round five amps, absolutely not more than 10, then it should be completely safe. If you have it at 10 or above, then potentially that will be producing hydrogen. And when the hydrogen mixes with the oxygen, it becomes explosive. And it can just be something as small as flicking the switch on your, um, on your power source or a light in the room that could make it go. So you really do need to um, keep your ampage and your volts low and slow and that's what's going to keep it safe for you. Because there are so many variables and so many things to consider with these sort of techniques what I've done is I've um, made a Pinterest board and I've put some some of the literature that I've been reading pinned onto that board. So if anybody wants to go and check it out go and have a read of those. Was, I've pinned the ones that I found quite helpful or go and do your own research and like I say, just be make sure that you are happy with the setup that you are working with. Beyond that, it's a really fun technique to do. I'm going to put the, the general health and safety details written in the bottom of this um, post, this video, and I'll also put the name and how you can find my Pinterest board. But if you're looking for me in general on any of my social media, it's just at Make It Kim Today and it should come up. Um, I hope that was helpful. I know um, it was probably still as confusing and I'm still scratching my head. <laughs> <laughs> but let me know how you get on because I know a few of you said you were going to have a go and have a play with it so good luck everybody